Okay, so scientists dropped a bomb. They ID'd something totally new out there, unlike anything we've seen before. NASA, always doing crazy research, says this new space thing is cool because it's huge and moves in a weird way, but also because it's sending out signals that seem like they're on purpose. Could this mean we're about to learn something that changes everything we thought we knew? Does this mean aliens might be real? If we dig into what NASA's found, we might just figure this out. Back in 07, NASA sent the Dawn probe to check out some of the interesting stuff in our cosmic backyard. It had these three ion engines that pushed it along. Dawn first spent over a year looking at Vesta, the second biggest rock in the asteroid belt. It sent back pictures and info that showed Vesta's got all kinds of crazy landscapes and geology. After Vesta, Dawn went to what everyone was really excited about, a close look at the Dwarf Planet series. Because of its ion engines, Dawn got away from Vesta and over to Ceres, which wouldn't have been possible with normal engines. These engines gave it a slow but steady push, letting it travel super far and get into orbit around Ceres. Ceres, first spotted in 1801, is the biggest thing in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. For years, people thought it was just a small thing, but it got reclassified as a dwarf planet in 2006. It's about 950 kilometers across, making it a really interesting thing to study. Scientists were stoked to get some good pictures of this weird world and saw bright spots all over it, especially in a big hole called a crater. These shiny spots immediately grabbed everyone's attention. Before this, all we had were blurry pictures from the Hubble telescope. Clearer pictures meant new discoveries could be right around the corner. The goal of the mission was to understand where the solar system came from and how water helped make planets. People thought these shiny spots were stuff that reflects light, like salt left behind after water dried up. This means there might be ice volcanoes that shoot out water instead of lava. What these spots mean for Ceres is still a big question. Do they mean there's still stuff going on inside? Or something even crazier? Ceres is different than other stuff in the asteroid belt because of its size, how heavy it is, what it's made of, and how it holds onto water and ice. Unlike most rocky asteroids, it's kind of like a comet, which might give us clues about how the solar system first formed. Dawn took two years to get to Ceres, arriving in early 2015, which was super exciting because we were about to get the first good look at the biggest thing in the asteroid belt. As the spacecraft got closer, it showed us a place we'd never seen before. The first pictures showed a beat-up surface covered in dents. But what got everyone talking were those shiny spots scattered across the rocky ground. As the pictures got better, scientists had a bunch of ideas about what the bright zones could be. Maybe they were icy surfaces reflecting light, or something mineral-rich, or even frozen volcanoes. More studies showed that the brightest area was a bunch of spots, not just one. These were thought to be salt left behind after water disappeared, which means Ceres has, or had, stuff inside that brought materials to the surface where they turned into shiny minerals. This changed the idea that Ceres was just a boring old rock and showed it as a wild and crazy world. The idea of salt and water underground brings up cool questions about the weather. Ceres might have what it takes for life. It's often called an icy planet with a rough outer layer, and it's different from other small planets that are mostly rock and metal. Its surface has clay, ice, water, and carbonates, making it lighter and chemically unique. This means there's probably a lot of water there, and the outer layer holds onto stuff like comets, not like asteroids. Researchers think Ceres has a weird inside, a semi-liquid middle layer around a rocky and icy core. This middle layer probably has rock and salt water, surrounding a dense center. The fact that there's so much ice means there might have been liquid water, especially if there was heat from radioactivity when Ceres was forming. This makes Ceres different from other things in the asteroid belt and raises questions about its geology and how water shapes space stuff. Plus, finding ammonia-based clay on Ceres suggests it might have formed way out in the icy parts of the solar system before moving inward. Ammonia lowers the freezing point of water, so liquids could flow closer to the surface. These findings teach us about Ceres and how other icy worlds might have come to be. Ice volcanoes, which are pretty rare, are way different than the lava volcanoes we know. They shoot out stuff like water, ammonia, or methane. 
On frozen places like Ceres, these things can come out as gas or liquid. It's thought that ice volcanoes bring water with dissolved minerals to the surface, where it turns to gas and leaves behind shiny salt. This would explain the bright spots Dawn saw. The most noticeable shiny spot is in a crater, especially in a place called SP5. SP5 got a lot of attention because it was super bright and changed over time, probably from water coming out sometimes. This means there's still icy activity going on, or at least was not too long ago. Besides SNP5, there are a bunch of other bright spots on Ceres, each with its own look. This means ice volcanoes might be more common on Ceres than we thought. These shiny features support the idea that Ceres isn't a frozen rock, but a wild and changing world. As Don kept sending data, we saw all kinds of stuff on the surface. Craters of all sizes covered the place, each marking a time in Ceres past. Every crash, whether from asteroids or space junk, tells part of Ceres' story and adds to its complicated history in the solar system. Also, the ammonia on Ceres is another clue about where it came from. Since ammonia slows down the melting of water under certain conditions, liquid water might have existed on or under Ceres' crust, maybe a long time ago or maybe even now. This supports the idea that Ceres came from the icy outer parts of the solar system and then moved inward. That move might explain its weird features, like the ammonia and signs of ice volcanoes. As researchers keep studying Ceres, both inside and out, their findings change how we think about planets, where life could pop up, and how geology works on frozen worlds far away. Once thought to be just a cold rock from the solar system's past, Ceres has shown itself to be a fascinating planet, one that challenges old ideas. The Dawn mission really helped show us these facts about Ceres. It gave us the most in-depth scientific and visual data ever taken of this dwarf planet. Dawn's work is essential to understanding the solar system. Every signal from the spacecraft showed us more about Ceres as a wild and changing world that had been hidden for a long time. These scholarly steps are just the start of trying to figure out the puzzles of the outer solar system. In the future, experts will keep looking at Dawn's data, searching for more signs of life-supporting situations, not just on Ceres, but on other icy things as well. As space travel gets better and new missions launch, even bigger discoveries might be waiting. Will we find proof of ice volcanoes? Might we see more proof of water under Ceres' surface? Only time will tell, but one thing's for sure, the story of Ceres is just getting started. It turned out the brightest spot wasn't just one spot, but a bunch of them all shining together. People think these are salt deposits left over after water or salty liquid disappeared. This means that Ceres might still have, or recently had, stuff going on inside that brings stuff to the surface, where it evaporates and leaves behind shiny minerals. This changed the idea that Ceres was just a boring, dead rock, and showed it as a lively and complex world. The chance of salt or underground water raises cool questions. Could Ceres have the stuff needed for life? It's often called an icy planet with a rough shell. Ceres isn't like most small planets, which are mostly rock and metal. Its surface has clay-like stuff, ice, water, and carbonates, making it lighter and different. This points to lots of water inside. The outside layer is kind of porous, holding onto materials like comets do, not like asteroids. Researchers think Ceres has a strange inside, a slushy layer around a rocky, icy center. This middle layer probably has rock and salt water, surrounding a dense center. Lots of ice means there might have been liquid water, especially if there was heat from radioactive decay when Ceres was forming. This makes Ceres different from other things in the asteroid belt and raises questions about its history and how water shapes planets. Also, finding ammonia-based clay suggests Ceres might have formed way out in the icy parts of the solar system before moving inward. Ammonia lowers the freezing point of water, so liquids could flow closer to the surface. These finds help us understand Ceres and how other icy worlds might have formed. Ice volcanoes are kind of rare. They're very different from the volcanoes we see on Earth. Ice volcanoes shoot out things like water, ammonia, or methane. On frozen places like Ceres, these materials can come out as gases or liquids. 
The water is filled with minerals to the surface, where being exposed to space causes the liquids to evaporate rapidly, leaving behind sparkling salt traces. That's a perfect explanation for the bright areas Dawn captured. The most obvious shiny spot lies inside a crater, especially in a region called SP5. SP5 got a lot of attention because it was super bright, and it seemed to change over time, probably because of water coming out every now and then. This suggests that icy activity is still happening, or at least happened recently. Besides SP5, there are other bright areas scattered on Ceres, each with its own unique look. This means that ice volcanoes might be more common on Ceres than we thought. These glowing spots show that Ceres isn't just a frozen relic, but a world that's still changing. As Dawn kept sending data, we found lots of stuff on the surface, like craters of different sizes, each marking some event in Ceres' past. Every crash, whether from asteroids or space junk, tells part of Ceres' story and adds to its history. Plus, the ammonia on Ceres gives us another clue about where it came from. Since ammonia slows down the melting of water, liquid water might have existed on or under Ceres' crust, maybe a long time ago or even now. This backs up the idea that Ceres came from the outer solar system and moved inward. That move might explain why it's so weird, with lots of ammonia and signs of icy volcanoes. As researchers keep looking into Ceres, inside and out, their findings help us understand how planets change, where life could pop up, and how geology works on frozen worlds far away. Ceres, once thought to be just a cold leftover from the solar system's past, has turned out to be a fascinating planet, challenging old ideas and making us respect what's possible in space. The Dawn mission helped reveal these facts about Ceres. It gave us the best scientific and visual data ever taken from this dwarf planet. Dawn's work is key to understanding the solar system. Every signal from the spacecraft revealed more about Ceres as a dynamic world, hidden from view for so long. These discoveries are just the start of trying to figure out the mysteries of the outer solar system. In the next few years, experts want to keep checking out the massive amount of data Dawn sent back, looking for more signs of stuff that could support life, not just on Ceres, but on other icy objects too. As space exploration goes on and new missions launch, even bigger finds might be waiting. Will we find more proof of ice volcanoes? Could we see more evidence of water under Ceres' surface? Only time will tell, but one thing's for sure, the story of Ceres is just beginning.